Actually, I'm not sure that was all that easy, but we got it. All right, uh, another question here. How do I know if I'm practicing the warm-ups in the right way? Also, I'm not clear with the idea of chest voice and head voice. Please explain. Thank you. Uh, Nithyashri, same student from India, asks, how do I know if I'm practicing the warm-ups the right way? Um, I think I just gave you a big example of that. Listen to the sound color. If it's something you can imagine inside your inside a song, if you can imagine you taking that sort of that that sound color moment and dropping it into a song, and you can imagine that it would sound good and you you like it, then it's probably okay. All right. Um, and uh, if it's not, then you know maybe maybe it's nasally, maybe it's grindy, maybe it's really throaty and dopey okay then it then it's not okay you've got to train yourself to listen singing is an instrument we're dealing and working and playing and singing in a world of acoustics this is the this is an acoustic endeavor so you've got to start listening diligently and critically to yourself and analyze those colors now you might ask as a beginner, well, how do I know? Okay, I get that. I can listen to it. I can sort of try to be critical, but I don't have the experience. How do I know? All right. You know, you compare it to the sounds that you hear from other professional singers. Compare it to the sounds that you hear from the demonstration videos that I gave you. All right. That's one really great way to do it. And then just be honest with yourself. Do I like it? Do I not? That's that's really can take you down the right path. Um, because if, because if it's not good, it's sort of obvious. So even for beginners, it's sort of obvious. And if it's good, does sound good, or at least better, it's also sort of obvious. It's not, it's not a mystery. All right, the other question is, uh, I'm not clear with the ideas of chest voice and head voice. Okay, chest voice and head voice, I got news for you guys. Chest voice and head voice, it's, these are just imagery words. They're just picture words. That, that, that have sort of, that, that describe the feeling that we have in the lower register. It's where the speaking voice resides. It's the register that's very intuitive. It's the one that sort of responds well for us when we're training and singing. And yay, yay! Head voice is the higher stuff, okay? That tends to be more difficult uh, initially, it starts with falsetto, but through the training and this program, you build the musculature and you begin to not have it sound like falsetto if you don't want it to. You begin to build the strength, the motor skills, and things we're talking about in the course and in the book, all right, to help you sound big and boomy in the head voice, okay? Um, so, chest voice down here. Um, it's where you speak, it's very intuitive, it's where things seem to be sort of easy. Head voice is everything above where things start getting choky, pushy, falsetto-y, we're getting in problems, okay? And in some sense, the mission statement for this studio, the main, in some sense, sort of the purpose of the big book that I wrote and the big course and everything that's going on is to be able to bridge the registers, chest voice and head voice, to be able to sing seamlessly from the chest voice to the head voice and create the illusion of one voice. And really at some point in your training, as you get more and more experience in regards to the musculature and the motor skills, it really does become one voice. It's not even illusion anymore. All right. So at first, a beginner, it's very, oh God, I'm in my chest voice and oh, now I'm in my head voice because I know because it's falsetto and I'm breaking. That's sort of where beginners start. And then the next step is sort of you know, I'm in my chest voice and I'm bridging into my head voice, but I've got a little bit of connectivity. Right, it's got a little bit of compression on top. It's not falsetto, so you remove falsetto, but you got a lot more work to do. And then, and then, and then, sorry. Step three is that you begin to build the musculature enough, enough strength in the musculature and enough elongation with, uh, through cry mode and other elements that you need to take the physiology higher, literally, and at that point, you're actually taking your chest voice, the physiology higher, okay? So we start with a lot, a lot of break, and then we get sort of a nice registration going, but it might be sort of light and it needs more musculature development, 
step three is to get more advanced, you really begin to just stretch that musculature higher. Okay? So that's chest voice, head voice. But, you know, an important lesson with this is realize that chest voice, head voice are not real things. They're just sort of chest voice, head voice. These terms are just picture words that we use. It's become pretty ubiquitous in the industry that we use to describe this lower register that's developed in this upper register that needs training. Okay? Um, that's what it means. And uh, again, uh, that's in the book, in the course. All right. That was easy. So we.